I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather consists of the traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Duwamish tribe who have stewarded the lands and waters of what we now call Seattle since time immemorial. We extend our gratitude uh, to their elders past and present as well as future generations. Uh, I am delighted to be your host today and to welcome all of you to today's virtual opening for the exhibition Art on the Mind, 10 Years of Creative Aging. So the exhibition did open to the public last week, uh, although we've had to close the museum again, but we are excited to still honor uh, the 10th anniversary and celebrate uh, all the creative pro aging programs that have started at the Fry with this exhibition that illustrates the success of arts engagement and bring joy, respect, and dignity to people living with dementia while destigmatizing the disease. I would also like to thank all the Fry staff who worked on this exhibition and today's virtual celebration and helped make them happen. These are all fantastic feats during these strange times that we're living in. So now I would like to introduce Joe Rosa, our director and CEO, who will share a few remarks. It's great to be here with you all. And um, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'd like to welcome you all to this virtual opening for Art on the Mind, 10 Years of Creative Aging. This exhibition was organized by Mary Jane Connect, our Manager of Creative Aging Programs, and Michelle Chang, Director of Education and Community Partnerships that you've just heard from. It is a special honor to have you all here today, not only because we're celebrating the opening of this new exhibition, which will be up for a full year. Uh, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of Creative Aging Programs at the Fry Art Museum, which is just very exciting and um, impressive how it has expanded and grown. I'd also like to thank the exhibition funders for Art on the Mind, which include the Richard and Maud Ferry Foundation, uh, the Fry Foundation, and of course our wonderful Fry members. Uh, many thanks to all of you as we embark on the next 10 years of creative aging at the Fry, and I thank you all for your commitment uh, to being part of our museum and this very important project led by Mary Jane. Thank you. All right, thank you, Joe. So now I would like to welcome Mary Jane Connect, who will share a little bit about the exhibition. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Michelle. It's with pleasure that I welcome you to this virtual opening and a celebration of creative aging. I extend my deep gratitude to the leadership of the Fry over the past decade and a committed creative aging advisory committee for their steadfast encouragement and support for the development of creative aging programs that aim to change public perception and build a respectful world for people living with dementia and their families. Since 2010, the Fry Art Museum has presented a variety of creative aging programs, including small group experiences in the galleries and art studio, one-on-one -on -one art making in care communities and private homes, and conferences and workshops for care professionals that um, focus on topics of creativity, dementia, and healthy aging. Designed to alleviate some of the social, emotional, and financial challenges that a person living with dementia and their family experiencing experience, the Fry's Creative Aging Programs serve as opportunities to deepen life experiences, foster friendships, and build community through art. Art on the Mind, 10 years of creative aging, shares stories and works of art that highlight the experiences of people living with dementia, their care partners, and those who help make the programs happen, including educators, teaching artists, volunteers, and a full roster of community members and partner organizations. Since we can't be together in the galleries today, I'd like to take you through the exhibition with a series of installation photographs. First slide, please. So the exhibition opens 
with a quote by Dr. Al Power, who's the author of Dementia Beyond Disease. And he also is the keynote speaker uh, at the Fry's Creative Aging Conference in 2016. Dementia is a shift in the way a person experiences the world around them. Again, dementia is a shift in the way a person experiences the world around them. Next slide, please. So opposite that quote, um, we enter the exhibition and there are works and stories from program participants. The artworks on the far left are by Julia Blackburn, a participant for 10 years. Julia participated in every program here at the Fry. And we're delighted to show her most recent work, which she created in the offsite program Bridges at Fred Lynn Manor. We'll be hearing more about Julia's experience a bit later in the program from her sister, Mary Beth. The work that you see in the middle is a watercolor by Kay Grant Powers. She created this work in the six week Here Now art making and gallery discussion tour program. Of their experience in the program, her husband Randy wrote, quote, I'll always remember our first visit for what seemed like a long time, everyone just looked at the frame painting in front of them. Then the group's leader asked us to talk about what we saw and how it made us feel. To my shock, Kay started waxing poetic, describing the painting in front of her. She was performing at an intellectual level I hadn't seen in at least a couple years. And to the right of Kay's work, a um, little kind of hard to see it there, but there are two absolutely delightful creatures in um, that glass cabinet. Uh, and they were created by Brian and Ann O'Leary, um, who took part in the Here Now class, during which they had the opportunity to uh, view and discuss the work of the botanist, which is a painting in the Fry collection by Gabriel von Mox. For the art making activity after the discussion in the galleries, um, the participants uh, had the opportunity to experiment with different clay material and with embellishments. Anne and Brian decided to create animals that are found near their home. In this case, a loon and an orca. Next slide, please. This part of the exhibition um, offers a reflective space to rest, perhaps watch the creative aging video, which is on the opposite wall, or to look out the window and enjoy the view of the courtyard. The artwork is a collaborative piece by Kirsten Canan, Margot Hughes McDonald, and Emma Levitt Royer. A little background on that work. Um, the creative aging programs use not only the Fry's collection, but also temporary exhibitions as inspiration for discussion and art making techniques. For a Here Now class with teaching artist Janet Fagan, participants explored the theme of movement by looking at photographs and videos of Seattle based choreographer and dancer Donald Byrd in the exhibition Donald Byrd the America that is to be. After the gallery discussion, participants responded by creating this collaborative piece of art while listening to music. Next slide. So with an emphasis on present moment awareness, creative aging programs are designed to encourage creative exploration, experimentation and playfulness. The works on the far left for these three artworks, here now participants explored the theme of costume design in two different exhibitions. After the gallery discussion, participants responded by designing costumes of their own using fabric and paper. 
In the middle and in the far right, we see a selection from Bridges, our offsite program. And this was work created by residents at Summit at First Hill, a local retirement community. These projects designed by teaching artist Carmen Ficara emphasize working with different materials and also emphasized um, creative decision making. Okay, next slide, please. The exhibition concludes with an eye towards the next decade of creative aging, aiming to expand its reach locally and globally to share best practices, training opportunities, and other resources. Of note is a dynamic innovation, innovative collaboration between the Fry and UW Memory and Brain Wellness Center, which I will discuss a bit later in the program. Next slide. For our last installation shot, it's a view of the exhibition from um, down towards the end of the, from where we just were with the work on the right, but looking down and having an opportunity to see all the work in that exhibition gallery space. I'd like to give a big shout out to my colleagues here at the Fry for all their support, creativity, and hard work in the development and installation of Art on the Mind. It's been a really terrific, um, and I dare say um, another learning experience for me here at the Fry to have this opportunity. And now to go full circle, I'd like to introduce poet and editor, Holly J. Hughes, whose book, Beyond Forgetting, Poems and Prose About Alzheimer's, planted the seed for the Fry's creative aging programs. Oh, I'm just so moved by what I just saw. I'm, I'm really pleased to be helping celebrate this 10 year anniversary of the creative aging program at the Fry. I'm honored to have played a small role and I've loved watching this program grow and evolve over the past decade to encompass all the valuable arts programming it now offers for those living with dementia and their care partners. As Mary Jane mentioned, in the spring of 2009, the Fry generously hosted my book launch for Beyond Forgetting, Poems and Prose About Alzheimer's Disease. There's the book cover. I'd read of the Fry another time and I'd met Mary Jane. In fact, we discovered that we're neighbors in Chimicum. At the reading that afternoon, we were all deeply moved by hearing the words of care partners, family members, and healthcare providers share their stories in the form of poetry. So I was honored and it seems appropriate to share a few poems from Beyond Forgetting. Before I do, I'd like to just give a little bit of context for the collection. I lost my mother to Alzheimer's disease several years before and I turned to poetry to sustain me during what was a really challenging time for my family. As I wrote in the preface, Writing poems became a way to witness honestly while reminding me to dwell in the present alongside my mother. When I began to share the poems I'd written at readings, I came to realize how prevalent this disease is by the fact that a knot of people always gathered afterward to tell me the story of their mother, father, husband, wife, sister, brother, I began envisioning a collection that might serve us all. I put out a call for submissions and by the time the deadline came, just three months later, I'd received over 500 from submissions from all over the world. I assembled an editorial team to help read them and together we selected work from a hundred people, not just published poets, but from care partners who knew this disease intimately from wives, husbands, daughters, sons, nurses, doctors, social workers, even an insurance adjuster. Fast forward a year and I was thrilled when Kate's, Kent State University Press accepted the manuscript for their literature and medicine series with publication plan for the spring of 2009. So the book launch was set for April 7th and if I remember right, the books didn't arrive, but the show went on. Nationally known poet, Tess Gallagher, who wrote the powerful introduction, was there, as well as several local contributors. 
The auditorium was filled with friends, colleagues, representatives from the Alzheimer's Association and several related nonprofits such as Elderwise. After the reading, we moved quite naturally into a lively conversation about the role of the arts in working with those with dementia. And that afternoon, a powerful collaboration was born. I didn't realize what had been set in motion until talking with Mary Jane later and over the subsequent years have been really gratified to witness the creative engaged programming that was catalyzed that day and that you just saw a sample of. I end my preface with these words from poet Jane Hirschfield, and they also seem to speak to the good work of the Creative Aging Program, that anxiety, grief, and the fear of chaos can be turned into beauty, meaning, and the irrefutable pleasure they bring is no small part of the mystery of what art does. So on that note, I'd like to share three poems um, from Beyond Forgetting that I hope might do this. I'm gonna start with my own poem, partly because this is the poem that really set the book in motion. This is the poem that I'd written and that I shared at readings um, and that people often wanted copies of because they could relate to it. Um, it's called The Bath. The tub fills inch by inch as I kneel beside it, trail my fingers in the bright braid of water. Mom perches on the toilet seat, entranced by the ritual until she realizes the baths for her. Oh no, she says, drawing her three layers of shirts to her chest, crossing her arms and legs. Oh no, I couldn't, she repeats, brow furrowing, that look I now recognize like an approaching squall. I abandon reason, the hygiene argument, promise a Hershey's bar if she will just please take off her clothes. Oh no, she repeats, her voice rising. Meanwhile, the water is cooling. I strip off my clothes, step into it, let the warm water take me completely, slipping down until only my face shines up, a moon mask. Mom stays with me, interested now in this turn of events. I sit up. Will you wash my back, Mom? So much gone, but let this still be there. She bends over to dip the washcloth in the still warm water, squeezes it, lets it dribble down my back, leans over to rub the butter pad of soap, swiping each armpit, then rinses off the suds with long practice strokes. I turned around to thank her, catch her smiling, lips pursed, humming, still a mother with a daughter whose back needs washing. One of the powerful things about poetry is that every time I read that, it really does return me to that, that moment that really marked a transition in my um, my way of relating to her. And so I, it gives me great pleasure to read that home because I made a real shift at that point. The next poem is a poem by Rick Kempa and it's called Prayer for My Mother. And it's, a, it's just a really beautiful poem that I thought would be nice to share. And one of the things I did with this collection is I invited the contributors to send a few sentences of contact. So I'm gonna start with that because I think it really helps give some, um, provide some background for the poem. Here's what Rick said. For nearly two years until she moved to a nursing home, my mother lived with my wife, our two teenage children and me. Her presence was a gift. We coalesced around her, sharing the pleasure of her boundless love, the challenges of being her caregivers and the sadness as her health declined. And here's his poem, Prayer for My Mother. Let every moment of every day break upon her with the dazzle of utter newness and let her exult in it. Let wonder rule the sky more lovely than she's ever seen, the birds that come by hundred to her feeder. Please let her forget that she does not remember. Let her lose somehow the torment of losing her mind. Let there be inside in the one page that over and over for days she reads for the first time, never gets beyond. Let the living past be vibrant in her dreams each night, 
her mother, her brother at her side, showering her with love. Please let her eyes open in the morning, not to the despair of the lost at sea, but to the familiar play of sunlight in the leaves outside her window, the solid sense that she is safe, the firm ground of home. And I just have to share that I'm reading this in my little writing studio in Indianola. And as I was reading the part about the birds coming to the feeder, a hummingbird flew up here. So that's synchronicity. The last poem is by Rachel Dacus. And um, I chose this, it just seemed to fit so well with the beautiful art that we just saw that Mary Jane just showed us, just walked us through. Um, because this is about her father, who was an artist, and she writes, It's heartbreaking to see a rocket scientist lose the ability to use a computer, but it's fascinating to see a lifelong painter sustain the connection with his past through the medium of art. My father is happiest these days at his easel, and what he has lost in intellect seems to be added back in an uncharacteristic peacefulness. The disease both gives and takes for all of us. And here's the poem. This is Rachel Dacus at the easel with Alzheimer's. My father is painting in the basement, blue, green, yellow. The cinder blocks wall white, which whitewash is tanned with dust and the ocean view obscured by a flapping sheet of vinyl. It fights the wind. He says he's inspired to blue. My call comes to the studio phone. His greeting, I can place you. You're the pharmacist, right? The pall on his memory has not dimmed his bad taste in jokes or how at the easel he's always affable over the scribble of boar's bristle, the give of canvas to brush. I skip over laughable lapses as when he asks me where I live and then pretends he was kidding. Name dropping, his mind grows patches, nicks and spores like the salt on his aluminum windows that will eventually make them stick. Painting down there, his panes always close, the air is warm and dry, not a hint of the sea. What are you working on now? His nose nearly on the canvas, he can only say, it's getting better, going somewhere. It's green, blue, and not as grim as it sounds. A brain grows lacy and colors squirm like the skeins of her yarn above the washing machine. Don't fight the wind, I tell him. Be a net. Catch the world by letting it slip the knots. So that concludes my reading. And I just, again, a, a vow of gratitude to Mary Jane and to all of you for all of this good work. It's so important. And I wish you all the best in the next decade. I look forward to seeing what it will bring. Thank you, Holly. That was beautiful. So now I'd like to welcome Mary Beth Blackburn, who along with her sister, Julia, has been a creative aging participant over the years and whose story is highlighted in the exhibition. Hi, this is Mary Beth. And uh, in 2009, my sister Julia was diagnosed with Lewy body dementia. She was 62 years old. She, everyone experiences dementia differently. For Julia, Lewy body brought about a slow but steady loss of vision. Early on, we learned to name this new presence in our life, Lewy. By naming it, we changed the narrative. It wasn't that Julia couldn't remember something or do some tasks she'd done with these before. Nope, it was Lewy. Naming it freed us both from the blame game of dementia and gave us a way to talk about what was happening. We learned to live with Louis and look for ways to enjoy life, e even as Julia's vision declined and her world continued to alter. So how does someone with vision loss end up at an art museum? Like so much else with dementia, it starts with saying yes. In 2010, the Fry started a pilot program for folks living with dementia and invited us along for the ride say yes. The program turned out to be exciting, different, unpredictable. 
the group tried out different combinations of gallery viewing and art studio sessions. How many pieces to view and discuss in one session? Each one begins with enough time to look, to really see the piece. We are seated so we can relax, sink into the work. And then with subtle expert guidance, react to and discuss what we see. This is where the group begins to coalesce and we get to know one another, each person with a different take on what we see, each one with a different story to bring to the work. Moving on upstairs to the airy light-filled art studio. What materials should we work with? What forms? Watercolor, sculpture, collage? Recorded music plays as we work. How about adding in live musicians, drums, flutes? It's a constant exploration of what works, what doesn't. Each session exciting and different, all of them freeing. This is Fry Time, and we are part of a new story for dementia, one that includes laughter and conversation, effort, concentration, quiet time, and above all, companionship, with a group of folks we can relate to and enjoy. In the studio, we find over time, we can look at a picture and know which one of us made it. We develop styles, motifs. We see what someone else has done with an idea and think, why didn't I do it that way? We admire one another's work and then next time steal each other's ideas. One thing stays the same, ending the day with tea, treats, and conversation. Often, especially at the beginning of a participant announces with certainty, I can't do this. I don't know how. I'm no good at this stuff. And then they quiet down, get caught up with the work and produce something amazing, totally amazing. This is the dementia brain on art. Expect to be surprised, expect to be amazed. When Julia and I head back home, we talk about what we did and saw what people had, had said and done, who we envied most this week. And it brings up memories of our shared life, the time before Louis. It also changed us. As I mentioned, Julia's vision was wonky, skewed and missing pieces of the visual field. Especially, she no longer registered visual info on her left hand side. When she needed to sign something, it was as if the left third of the page didn't exist just gone until we joined the Fry program. One of her early paintings was a circus. Okay, it started out as a mountain, but then she turned that into a circus tent with an audience and lions and clowns. But she knew something was missing, right? A ringmaster. So she fitted the ringmaster in on the left hand side. Please someone explain to me how suddenly the left side showed up for her right there when she needed it. Part of me thought, what the hell? We've struggled months with this wonky vision thing. We joined this arts program and oh, no big deal. I'll just put the ringmaster over here in this big empty space. Of course it didn't last, not a day, not an hour, but in fry time, sure, why not? Since 2010, we've continued to participate in fry programs, meet me at the movies, the Alzheimer's cafe, and until coronavirus interrupted all our lives, the Bridges program. Bridges takes arts engagements to residents and care facilities, including Julia's place. Our journey with dementia is now in its 11th year. It has been a better, sweeter journey, thanks to 10 full years of fry time. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your reflections, Mary Beth. Now I would like to welcome Patricia Klinger, who along with her sister, Cynthia, is also a creative aging participant and a member of the Fry's Creative Aging Advisory Committee. Thank you, Michelle. And good afternoon, everyone. As Michelle mentioned, my sister, Cynthia, and I, in the latter part of 2015, took up the, at that time, popular Last time of coloring in books specifically designed for adults. And that actually that particular activity gave us a chance to bond and to create. And sometimes there was conversation, other times it was just background music and sometimes even silence, but yet we were creating. 
But then we stepped up our game, so to speak, when in January of 2016, we were introduced to the Fry Museum's Creative Aging Program through Bridges, which both Mary Beth and uh, Mary Jane have mentioned. This is the program that provides in-home art sessions for the person living with dementia, as well as the care partner. And I appreciate so much that Bridges includes both individuals so that the art can be recreated at a later time after the artist, Carmen Fakara, who Mary Jane mentioned, has moved on to other households that allows that activity to remain alive in the person's experience because the care partner can help to explain the different types of design that are possible. Not only did Cynthia and I learn a lot together, but we had a lot of fun just creating. And it didn't take long for me to see that her inner artist also came out to learn and play. She created things that I never would have imagined. I did not see the artist in her, in her younger years. And the creativity and the spontaneity that prompted her designs were just absolutely amazing to observe. One of the things that Carmen does is encourage the artist to name their design in the moment. And that's especially where Cynthia's creativity came out to create something and say, well, that's called amoebas or that is the calmer or that those are sprinkles. That painting is called, or that design is called sprinkles. Plus Carmen paper framed each piece. And that for me, validates how authentic and meaningful that art piece is because now it has been framed. We were later offered a second opportunity at Bridges when someone had to cancel and now Cynthia's home office, which I am going to screen share with you. Let's see, where is that? Uh. All right. So that's her home office. And this picture is a bit dated because these spots that you see here have now been filled with other of her creations. But this is the one that she, in the moment, said called Amoeba. This one is Olympus. This is Sprinkles. This is, this is Psych Ward, but this is offset by the calmer. So it was just an opportunity for her to use her life experiences and then give them additional life through her art. Later in uh, 2016, Mary Jane invited me to participate on the Creative Aging Advisory Committee, which gave me kind of a behind the scenes approach and an opportunity to experience the discussions and planning and the research and the networking that takes place with the doctors and the aging specialists and the people from all kinds of creative corners coming together with a shared passion to provide outlets for people living with dementia to experience art. And it was through this committee that I learned about the monthly Alzheimer's cafes, which Cynthia and I began attending for the first time on her birthday in January of 2017. We were so very fortunate to continue having exposure to art that could stimulate her mind and encourage her to process what she was seeing. So for the first time, for the first two years, Cynthia would listen to the conversations and the opinions of others that were being observed and as the group kind of studied and learned more about the art piece that was presented. From time to time, I would lean over and 
ask her, do you want to share what you say, you know, what you're thinking? What do you see in this particular painting? And she would just shy away. But she was always very engaging when we went to the cafe afterwards for light snacks and live music. That gave her the opportunity to meet new people who over time became familiar faces. It was at some point in 2019, a couple of years into this process, that we were watching or looking at a painting when we were asked to share what we were looking at. I saw Cynthia's hand go up <laughs> and her mouth open. And it was just so exciting to hear her begin to describe what she was seeing. And for me, that kind of encouraging is what art is all about. It's, it's allowing the voice to speak for the eyes. And she, at the next month meeting or session, did the same thing, put her hand up and spoke. So I knew that it was always there, just as her inner artist had been lying low all these years that the capacity for her to experience in that way would find that moment when it was ready to share. Cynthia and I are so very grateful for all that we have benefited from with our participation in the programs through Creative Aging and she couldn't be here today. I actually wanted her to be here beside me, but I know I speak for her when I talk about how fortunate we have been to be a part of all of this and are looking forward to many, many more years of participation and contribution because of the benefits that have been received. So we, understand because of our participation, how valuable it is for people living with dementia to experience their life and their adventures through art. We clearly recognize that we are blessed. So at this time of the year, it is appropriate to extend out to all of you, our thanks for all that you have done. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Patricia. Now I would like to introduce Janet Fagan, who is a creative aging volunteer and teaching artist. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, my heart is so full. I have been enjoying this program so much. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone for being here and for your interest and support of the Creative Aging Program. I am a local artist um, and over the years, I have had the, the pleasure of teaching in many different locations and capacities. And without hesitation, I can say that my involvement with the Creative Aging Program is, has been the most rewarding teaching experience that I've had throughout my, throughout my career. Um, my uh, involvement has um, lasted for several years now, and I am looking so forward to the future, both as a volunteer in the Bridges program and a teaching artist in the Here Now program. But my interest in creative art, in creative aging, actually began uh, within my family with my mother. <laughs> and my mother was a professional artist. And as she got older, um, she started to struggle cognitively with uh, dementia and began to find it harder and harder to engage with what she loved the most, which was creating. Um, we would show her paintings that she did and she had no connection to them any longer. She couldn't remember creating them um, and she didn't really have a, a starting point or any reference any longer um, to create art or the confidence to sit down and, and try to make something. So 
I decided that I would try um, to put on my teaching artist hat with my mom and um, become an art making team with her. Um, I would set up the still life and put out all the supplies and we would sit down together. And in the, in the beginning, um, she was very afraid. She was afraid to start. But with my encouragement and um, just continued efforts, she eventually tried. She started. She began. And once she took that first step, it was so powerful and amazing for me to witness how she would lose herself in the moment of making. It was as if she was, she was getting in touch with some deep part of herself that had been left behind. And to see her reconnect and be able to focus, this was the only place that she could really be in the moment was when she was, when she was making. So she would sit often for an hour, an hour and a half. And at the end of that time, she would have a beautiful piece of artwork. And I would show it to her. And the, the best part was seeing her joy and her amazement at what she had done at what she had created and that pride in the making would live well beyond the the hour or hour and a half that we spent together because i could represent it to her long after she had forgotten you know the actual time that we spent together but seeing it again and having it represented to her she would beam and glow and and believe that she had made it and that was powerful that was that was really incredible and what what it did for me was it really showed me what was possible what was possible for someone that was struggling with cognitive issues, with memory loss, as my mom was? Um, it wasn't the end of the road. <laughs> there was still a huge amount of potential for deep satisfaction and joy. Um, so finding a program where I could where I could work with other adults that were going through the same challenges that my mom faced and use art as a way to bring confidence and satisfaction to get to them, that um, became a goal. So <laughs> I, am, I feel so blessed to have um, come into the, the Bridges program as a volunteer and the Here Now program as a teaching artist because the people that I've met through these programs, the artists and the caregivers, um, the other teaching, teaching artists, Mary Jane, I've learned so much from this community and it's been so inspiring. And what I keep being reminded of over and over again is the importance of meeting somebody where they are for having the ability to really be in the moment with another person, to really be present for them. And most of all, just gratitude, because this truly is the best work that I have ever had. And watching the artists that I get to work with move through that same trajectory that I saw with my mom, to go from being tentative and uncertain to being confident and joyful. There's just nothing better. <laughs> so thank you for letting me share a little bit of my experience and my love for this program. Thank you for sharing your story as well, Janet. Now I would like to welcome back Mary Jane who will talk a little bit more about creative aging resources. Hey, hi everybody. Um, so as we begin to wrap up the program, I'm really um, excited to share with you some new resources that we've been working on. Um, next slide. Okay, so um, in conjunction with the exhibition, um, we've designed activity cards for several projects which are featured in the exhibition. So this is one really fun collaborative activity uh, that explores um, shape, lines and shapes um, while listening to music. Next, please. This activity, Animals as Inspiration, um, begins with a discussion of the work of uh, the botanists and then um, provides instructions for creating um, animals inspired by looking at that 
work. And um, actually, can we look at the next slide, please? So the way these cards are designed is then when you open them up, um, we list the materials that are needed and we try to work with materials that you can find at home um, or minimal shopping needed and then activity instructions um, and then some tips for actually looking at works of art. And we have uh, designed three of these activity cards um, as part of the exhibition. Next slide, please. So for additional activities, um, check out the Fry From Home blog, which offers a variety of digital content, including resources to engage older adults, um, especially uh, we hope you'll find useful during this time when we can't gather uh, together, whether here at the museum or you know, in any, any situation that uh, might involve more folks. Um, so for the Fry From Blog, Fry, the Fry From Home blog, uh, Caroline is going to be putting that link in the chat. Next slide. So um, there are art making activities for this one uh, that Janet has uh, created, which is really fun to do, um, inspired by portraits. Next one, please. And then a wonderful series of guided artworks um, that our colleague Caroline Bird narrates. And um, what's been really fun about working on these is that we've been able to share some works uh, from the Fry collection that have not previously been shown in the galleries. And next slide, please. And then, oh. Just some really, really wonderful sing-alongs with Carmen. Um, and um, I'll tell you, if you, if you need some cheering up, it's, it's just really wonderful uh, to spend some time with Carmen and sing some of these songs. Um, he's put in, there's captions for all the songs in there. Uh, so to help you sing along. Next slide, please. And now I'm delighted to close with sharing a, a very exciting collaboration between the Fry and University of Washington Memory and Brain Wellness Center, working together to create the Memory Hub, a place for dementia friendly community, collaboration and impact. Actually located right next to the museum, the Memory Hub will provide support education and wellness programs, and also house partner organizations that offer support groups, creative arts and technology classes, um, really cool horticultural therapy experiences, uh, just to name a few. This dynamic community, as I mentioned, centered on the Fry campus, will welcome visitors year round and invite, invite them to experience new perspectives on living well with dementia. You can find more information on the Memory Hub on uh, the UW Memory and Brain Wellness page, which um, the link will be shared for you in the chat room. So thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna turn this back to Michelle to wrap up today's program. Thank you, Mary Jane, and thank you to all of uh, all of you for joining us today. Uh, we are so excited to share this exhibition with you, and if you are able, we hope you can visit it in person when we are able to reopen the museum. In the meantime, we encourage you to check out our new digital resources that Mary Jane walked us through earlier, and lovely to have all of you with us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. <laughs>